as a preliminary, okay, script for remotely conducted open meetings, confirming member access as a preliminary matter. This is, oh wait, uh, identifying, identify meeting manager, that would be Holly, you're the meeting manager. Uh, Chair, Brooke, um, and Brooke Mirbergen, permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Um, members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Mr. Mickey Rowland. Here. Ms. Lucy Dillon. Here. Ms. Jason Finger. Jason. Are you here? Yes, yeah, sorry, I didn't know it was muted. <laughs> All right, and um, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Holly Backus. Present. All right, and are there any anticipated speakers on the agenda? Uh, I don't think there are. All right. Introduction to remote meeting. Good afternoon. Uh, this open meeting of the Nantucket Historic Structural Advisory Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Government Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. Um, for this meeting, uh, the, uh, yes, will not feature public comment. Uh, for this meeting, Historic Structures Advisory Board is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Uh, for Zoom meetings. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Meeting materials, uh, all supporting uh, meeting materials, all supporting materials that have been provided, members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I broke me in the chair and notes otherwise. Meeting business ground rules. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear con conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I broke me will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Uh, for items with public comment, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and be acknowledged by and speak through the chair. And finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Uh, and that is all I have to say. Holly, is there anything I need to add or do? No, sir, you got it. Okay. Um, so the first application is the, uh, I'm guessing it's revisions to the uh, garage on 60 Wall Street. So, um, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to let you all know this is on your agenda because the um, HDC asked for a view based on your comments and staff's comments. Yep. Um, there, I don't believe, we can look at the um, packet, but I don't believe that the changes, there, that there's any changes reflected based on that meeting. I think it was just a, a strictly a, a view. Um, well, uh, um, the drawings that I see right now show uh, some changes. Okay. Um, well, then. So we can certainly uh, mistaken. Absolutely. have a look. Ah, good. Um, let's see. Uh, Lucy, would you like to go first? Um, well, I'm glad they changed it to shingles sides. Um, I did go down there and I, 
if you remember, I was concerned about the um, large doors and decking at the gable end. Mm. Um, I couldn't see that. I did, the orientation for, I was sort of messed up from um, Brand Point Road, uh, so I couldn't see it. Um, maybe someone has be better insight into this, but um, I'm glad that they got away from the uh, little country church uh, schoolhouse look. All right. Um, Mickey? Yeah, I agree with Lucy. I think it's a, definitely almost everything is is in the right direction. I, you know, I still don't love those huge gliding doors. I don't know they're going to be visible, but um, I don't know. I'd rather they change them, but I can accept it as it is if they don't, I suppose. Um, uh, Jason, would you like to comment? I agree about the big glass doors. I still have issues with those. Um, I just like to know if they're visible, um, but I don't. I didn't have a chance to get down there, but that's my biggest issue that's left with this. All right, I guess that's it. I agree with everything that's been said about the doors and the shingles and the cupola and all of it. All right, all right. Um, seems we're all kind of on the same page. I think certainly think it uh, is um, more, more uh, appropriate, yes. Maybe we could we we could sort of base our you know sort of nod forward based on um, visibility, and they could do come back later with a once it's framed, they can come back and apply for those larger doors. Okay. So, Good idea. So we would so as a as a board, we would recommend that um, you know in order to move the project forward, that it be a, approved, but that the doors um, will have to be. Uh, viewed uh, after framing. Well, we'll have to approve some kind of door there. So yeah. they might have to come back with a revision for the door and then they can come back later and change it to those big ones. If they okay. Want. Um, all right. Uh, we ready to move on? Yep. <clears throat> okay. right. So next one is 32 Westchester. 32 Westchester and that was Yeah. Okay. Um, the organization of this timeline so we can see how much has been altered. There, there is a sheet there. The last page. Or middle six, page six. Um, so, uh, Jason, would you like to go first? No. <laughs> okay. How about Angus? Would you like to go first? Yeah, I do. I'm just, I... Sounds like Jason wants to go. Okay. <laughs> I just don't want to even make a comment on it because it's still just not appropriate. Yeah, this... Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Jason, you just think it's just generally not appropriate. Um, it, do, say, it doesn't fit in with anything down there. I mean, no. it's humongous. It's massive. It's too big. It 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 just doesn't fit with any of the buildings yeah. um, on Westchester or that little side road. Okay. I, I don't disagree. Uh, Angus, would you like to? Uh, I know. Huh? <laughs> I do. Uh, I do agree. It, it doesn't fit in. I think we've been saying that along and and. And when you look at the four different submissions, um, it, you know, at first glance, it's like it's all the same the whole way through. I, I don't see that any of our concerns from the last time were uh, really addressed. Uh, like on the north side where, where we were talking about breaking up the massing some, just another window has been ordered to, uh, added to that dormer and there wasn't anything about the, the roofs or the massing that changed. Um, yeah, uh, pretty much all the concerns are are pretty much the same as they have been. All right, uh, Mickey. 
Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. I'm not, I don't love this building by any means, but I think we do need to be more specific because I suspect it's, you know, they're, they're not going to be quite as critical on the real board. So I want to go elevation by elevation and just sort of point out some things that we still would like to see change. Uh, at least I would like yes. to. See. So starting on the, uh, on the east, um, the front door, a four light front door, it seems they can do better, it seems awkward. Um, I'm going to page. I just want to, um, if, sorry, um, this is the previous and then this was the proposed. So oh, this right. is their new, they right. changed That's it from that large one to the kind of craftsman style. Yep, six, six light better. Okay, so I'll, I'll withdraw that kind of. Thank you. All right, over to the north. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, not, it's not bad, but they didn't do the relief in, the, in that roof plane, which I think would be a huge benefit. They did drop the, they separated the roof a little bit. That's an improvement. Um, they just didn't push the wall in on that dormered, upper dormered area in the middle. I think that would, would have been helpful. Um, otherwise, and yeah, that would also increase the depth of that shed roof, which would have been a bonus too. Otherwise, the balance of windows and walls isn't too bad. Um, over to the west, much better. They got rid of the fireplace. The so windows are normal. Uh, but the south is just a massive, massive wall, especially that middle section with no no relief. Um, um, it's, a, it's a tall vertical wall within that main big shed dormer in the middle. You know, maybe they could break that into two dormers rather than one big one. That would probably go a long way. And the, uh, I still would rather see some symmetry in the, in the dormers to the right, which just looks like they missed a window and go up and down. Mm -hmm. And the panes on the French on the French doors, whatever they are, are are leaning towards horizontal so or squares, so they need to fix that. Um, anything further to add, Mr. Roland? No. Did you get that, Holly? Great. All right, Lucy. Um, yeah, I don't like those new doors. The ones with the horizontal panes with the uh, eight panes. Are you on the south elevation? Yes. All right. um, I, you know, I'm not crazy about this building. I agree with what Mickey says. I just think on the south elevation, there's there's so much glass compared to the um, other side of the building, um, and the front. Has I noticed they had shutters? Were they all there all along? Yes, except for the very first application. I think the shutters are a positive. I agree. Um. That's all I have to say. I'm, I'm just not crazy about it. All right. Um, all right. So it seems we're uh, kind of all on the same page on this. Uh, definitely think it's it's a missed opportunity architecturally, uh, given the bungalow styles that are down there. Um, I think it's kind of a generic massing, um, and over over large uh, as it addresses uh, Wesco Place. Um, I think the south elevation, uh, again, the, the fenestration, the balance, there's something lacking there. Uh, I think that they could run the porch longer on the south elevation and at least break up that wall. Um, yeah, but uh, there's, a, there's definitely some opportunities here to make some changes. Um, I guess that's it for me. Uh, any, anything, uh, Lucy? Well, I was going to say they, um, 
is it the, the front with the shutters? I mean, no. to me, that, that looks like Sconset. Maybe it's because I had a house that looked like that. Mm. Um, it looks like Sconset, but then the, that, the look isn't, doesn't continue to, throughout the, the rest of the design. Right. Well, if you look, if you look at the uh, very first East Elevation proposal, where it's the two over twos. Yeah. The, uh, I think that the lack of shutters there hurts the design. And when you add the shutters, it takes up a lot of the, the shingle space. Um, I don't know that you'll ever see all the other sides uh, on that site. But. What color is the trim on that, Holly? What color are the shutters going to be? Uh, light, light gray. Okay. And another thing, uh, where are the AC units? I don't see them, do you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no AC, yeah. <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'd like to see them um, not also not visible from the street, but also from um, too visible from Lily Pond. All right. Um, okay, are we, are we uh, ready to move on? Uh, well, I didn't really ad address each elevation. Um, I agree with pretty much every what everyone said, but when you're looking at um, when you're looking at the east elevation and the south elevation, um, you know, with the porches that go almost to the end but not quite, I I think this could benefit by a wraparound porch mm. south uh, from the east to the south. Mm -hmm. And it would help bring down the verticality. It, it feels like the dormers are too large. They, they're flush and they're going to the gable ends um, too far. Uh, and I think that this would help mitigate that, but I'd, I'd still like to see them set back further. Um, Brooke, I agree with, with your comments about symmetry um, on the south elevation on either side of the French doors, top and bottom. Um, there's just, there's so much glass and so much of the same door on that south side. Um, it just feels like one big thing and the middle block still really competes with the, with the, the higher uh, block. Um, yeah, I would, if, if the porch wrapped around, I'd also be tempted to make them deeper, like eight feet. Mm-hmm. That's all. All right. I think it's a good idea, I guess, to wrap that porch around it. I think that'll help. Yeah. You could wrap it all the way around, all okay. the way on the south elevation, too, and just cut up that wall of shingles. So you're saying all the way down or most of the way down the south? Yeah, just run, just keep running it to the left. Yeah, look at the floor plan. It's got to, it's got to cut back. Into, there's a not, not all the way down that far, but like um, on the on the middle mass. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, yeah, that's a that's a good idea. It would definitely bring it down a lot. Definitely. Make it a little more graceful. Yep. Good. Right. Instead of high heels tripping up some stairs. All right, um, next one. Five North Liberty Street, right? Yes. So I have a little, little bit of uh, answers for, you, for all of us with this one. Um, uh oh. <laughs> well, so this is the door replacement, and we, as, as included myself in this, I had talked to the um, architect afterwards and Steve 
explained to me what his intention was and I explained how unclear the application was, but here, I'm gonna pull it up. At the end of the day, they're wanting to, the property owner wants to um, replace the two existing doors along the facade, right? Here, into the Dutch doors that were there from the 50s. Um, it, again, we were we were we we're not all clear, and I'll go down to the foot, and I explained how it was not clear based on the rendering. But if you remember, we had the schematic showing this, and it was unclear. You know, is this a, a, a panel? The bottom is supposed to be a panel, um, and then then here's the Dutch door here. So he wants to replace this door and this door, same size as a two Dutch doors, one, two. So again, I explained it was un fairly unclear. Thanks, Holly. Holly. Um, in that photograph, um, the, the railing obstructs the view of the, the bottom door. Um, is it a vertical plank door? So you can see the Dutch is here. It looks like it's one of the, almost like a a, a panel cross. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's not entirely full um, replacement based on the photograph, but the intention is there. But instead of having it just on the side door, they also want the front door. So another thing too with that Dutch door that's in the picture is that it's nine light. And it's more splitting the door. Hey, more hang on, hang on. Let's uh, let's let's do this in some kind of order. Angus, would you like to go first? Excuse me. <laughs> You're yeah, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the proposal, it it shows a twelve light door, uh, a twelve light for the top, and it it looks long. Um, so there's two different ones. There's an A and a B. It's it's actually a nine light with a these are panels on the bottom. So the elevation that shows the door is not really a true representation. Hang on here. There are two drawings. All right. There's a version A south elevation, and if you scroll down, there's a version B. B. One is a nine light, and the other is a twelve light. Yes. So I think he's giving us the option to say whether we like one over the other. Correct. <clears throat> And, and Mr. Chair, if, if I may just bring up um, the reason for that is the discussion at the HTC is if you look at the historic windows in this structure, we have more lights than mm -hmm. typical. So yep. that was the intention of, of bringing both forward as a choice. Uh, just to finish, um, I think that the both versions, the, the top panel is um, unusually long and the bottom unusually short. Um, I try to even those up and a light configuration might be determined by doing that with doing a nine light, but even the nine light version looks long in, in their, um, I guess, proposal A. Thank you, Chair. You're welcome, Mr. McLeod. Thank you for your contributions. Mr. Rowland. Yeah, I um, I'm gonna I kind of agree with Angus, although you know I don't necessarily mind the t proposal B twelve light door to the left. I I do not think it's appropriate to put it in the front door position. I think that should remain as it is. Not should should not be a Dutch door. So I would like them to leave that one alone. The one on the left, um, as Angus is saying. Be proportionate and go to a nine light or leave it the way it is in 12. I'm not that particular. All right, Lucy. Um, I agree that the front door should be left the way it is. Usually aren't front doors different from the rest of the doors on a building. Mm -hmm. Plus, um, you know, they've made this, this house and the landscaping quite formal. And a you know split Dutch door is more cottagey in my thinking. Jason, 
Um, typically a Dutch door isn't used as a front door either. So I think it should be a Dutch door for the, it can be for the side door and then the door should remain the same or go back to what it was when it was the theater. The, is it a solid door? I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, the original photo shows a six panel door. And right now they've got it's, a- It's just people, you know, it's like picking pieces of history over time, what you like, and then just sticking it on and then it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, all right, uh, Chair agrees with what's been said. So uh, um, I would prefer the, uh, exi the, the door as built for the front door to remain and that the side door could be a nine light or a 12 light Dutch, um, kind of like what was shown in the original uh, configuration. So it's, it's really, um, really not that different from what was. Can I ask something? What you what may. is it? Thank you. Um, what is the age of the door that's currently on front door that's currently on the building? Oh, that, I believe it's contemporary. Yeah, that's recent. Photographs, yeah. Recently, when they went through the revisions. Sorry, I'm going to try to find it. Wrong direction. That's what we got. Let's just say that was all done in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was. In the sure. last 20 years, too. Not that long ago. Yeah. It's it's still a, there's a reason that they, that the HTC probably wanted that, too. Um, anyway, um, anything else? Okay, all right. Uh, can we move on? Yep. All right. Thirty two North Liberty Street. I think you all are going to like this better than the previous. Um, the owner also provided a letter for the commission. Um, which is in the packet. I don't know if you all read it or not. Mm -hmm. um, basically giving a outline and, and reason why they are um, wanting to do the addition to the structure. Um, but I really do believe that your comments along with the commission's comments really were um, a driving force and I think staff <laughs> uh, to the revised changes to this. So remember the addition before was if you're coming up North Liberty, it was on this side. Mm -hmm. Now they've actually putting it in the location of the previous addition and then extending it more that direction, which would give the view of the historic structure the way it is, the way it's been, the way it's it should be. Mm -hmm. um, All right. Who would like to go first? Jason. <laughs> no. Yeah. Ricky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it's an improvement. I agree, Holly. I um, the east elevation looks great facing the road. Um, you know, switch around and go to the. What is it? The west um i don't i don't get why they want to put a gambrel roof attached to this gable building um and the dormers are bizarre on this gambrel roof i don't think i've ever seen that before so the, the whole scale of this is I mean way off how visible it is i don't know um I, i've got a feeling you'll see it from somewhere it's a pretty dense area all over the place. Um, I, I think it's the right direction. I just don't think the roof pattern they've chosen is chosen is. How about Jason? I live not that far in Tom Nevers from a house that's been done the same way and it looks quite frankly 
stupid. <laughs> um, uh, and I don't know why the HDC ever allowed it to happen. It just doesn't, it's just two different houses. It looks like two different houses stuck together. Um, I don't think it's appropriate. I appreciate that the front of the house facing the street is relative, re remaining relatively the same. I also think that the addition is way too tall. Um, it should be more simple and speak to something that would have been more of an appropriate addition that would have been placed on this house. Um, it's basically um, an addition and the house becomes an afterthought. Um, so I think it needs to come down and I don't think it should be a gambrel roof. Um, we don't have many of those on Nantucket. It was not a common um, roof line for Nantucket. Um, I think they just looked across the street um, and saw the Seth Ray house, <laughs> um, decided to copy that, but it, it, they wouldn't have done that to this house. Um, so that's it for now. I guess uh, I uh, applaud the, um, the move to move the addition to the back from the side. It makes so much more sense um, relating to the original the existing structure. Um, I agree with Mickey's comments about the the um, the gambrel um, not making sense, and the, and the comments about um, the the height being the same height as the um, as the main gable. Uh, I'd prefer to see that down uh, lower. Um, that that forty five angled wall facing west and north is odd. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why, why that would be proposed. At, I would either go long on one or short on the other, but to do a right angle as opposed to an, a, a 45 there. That's all. Uh, Lucy? I, I definitely don't like the gamble at all. I mean, this, according to the application, this house is 1840 and in the neighborhood, I mean, it, it, it's a cute average Joe's house and to have this huge, massive addition is just inappropriate. So you would say step, step it down? I would say step it down and get rid of the gamble. All right. Well, um, I don't like the angle thing either. Right. I can't say I totally disagree with what's been said. I think that this is a great effort. I think that the gambrel could be tweaked a bit to make it work. I think it, the eave line could be dropped uh, and certainly the massing could be step down from the main ridge. Um, the shed dormers are a little peculiar. Uh, I think that, you know, they could maybe go with uh, a different um, form and still accomplish the same uh, interior living space. Um, I think that the, uh, you know, there are, there are a few examples of old gambrels um, in, in the area. I think Hussey Street has, um, one right near the end, um, or um, yeah, down where it meets uh, India Street. I think mm -hmm. there's there's a, a, a funky gambrel salt box looking structure there. Um, so, you know, um, I don't think that's unusual. And I also think that the angled the angled part, um, you know, maybe it could be done a little bit more attractively. But again. Uh, if you go through town, you'll see that there are many cases where uh, the, the walls were built up to the property line and are not quite straight. So this is not, would not be an unusual, uh, you know, situation uh, where, where you're trying to kind of, um, you know, meet your, meet your property line uh, with, with uh, some volume. So, um, I don't know. That's my, those are my comments. Yep. Yeah, I would, I, you know, I hear what you're saying about the gambrel, but I, I, I don't know many, if any buildings that have a combination of, an, you know, mm -hmm. main mass gable with a gambrel addition. 
Mm -hmm. and it works. How about Gracie's Mansion? Isn't that kind of a situation where there's a, a Gambrel meeting? Uh, um, I, I can't remember. You know, down at the end of Lily Street. Yeah. But, yeah, but that's a, that's a huge building. Yeah, that's a that's a different yeah. form altogether. And then um, I think the other one that kind of comes to mind as uh, you know has some architectural oddities added to it is in the midway down Lily Street you've got uh, the Victorian uh, Oriole Bay uh, sticking out of the Greek Revival and it works um, because it's unusual and it is quirky. Now I don't know if this would fall into the quirky nature just because of the size of the gambrel but there are examples you know in the area of sort of a, a mix and mash um uh, forms but um so anyway i think that i think that going forward it would if we had if we kept and keep an open mind if he comes back with a gambrel but the form is a little different you know might that be uh something that we could live with you know what i'm saying I have to see it. Perhaps. <laughs> Lucy. Well, you know, I'm looking at the floor plan, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, this little house is it's not five bedroom material. You know, they've got four bedrooms upstairs and one downstairs. I mean it's mm -hmm. you know, I've got a large family too and I don't have four, four, five bedrooms. <laughs> Asking a lot. Yeah. yeah. Also, does it, I can't, uh, what does the map look like? Does it run along the side of, what is it, uh, what road is that? Does the road, does it have, what besides, road? no. No, I guess I'm wrong. I was thinking that it, the road, the other road ran on the side of it, but I'm wrong. No, uh, Franklin is uh, Thank you. Uh, one parcel away. Okay. But it's very visible. Yeah. Plus, where does it fall with the cemetery? No, it's. Um. All right. So I think what's been said, you know, I mean, it certainly uh, gives the HDC something to work with. Um, does anything, uh, anyone wish to add anything further? Angus? Oh, uh, I, I can see the objective. It's to get head height upstairs enough for two bedrooms. But, um, you know, most of that space is going to be created by dormer. So if you look at it that way, what, you know, what are you doing with the gable end? And why couldn't it just be a simple gable? Um, you know, where, where the beds are going to tuck under the eave anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then do the dormers. And if they are separated dormers, um, and set, as opposed to a long one, which, which I think is, is better, you know, it could step, step in and then be a flat wall between the dormers so that the dormers are articulated. But, um, but it, it feels yeah, the, the, the gamble's not feeling exactly right on me. All right. One more thing. Uh, yes, Mickey. You, you know, when you look at the, um, like right there, the south elevation, you see that the remnant of the shed dormer on the back of the main building. Hmm. There's another one on the north. It, I mean, the, that dormer has, has become completely overwhelmed. There's nothing left of it except for a sliver of it on either side. So that's a, that's a pretty odd thing, too. To, completely lose oh, habit, right. but it's totally lost. Now is that a flush, is that, does that cheek wall of that uh, existing shed go all the way out to the uh, edge? It, it looks like it does on the west elevation actually. Yeah, look in the west elevation, there's about a foot. Oh so, yeah, that's... So it looks like it goes right to the edge. Is that existing? No, that's not. Okay, so that's... That's messed up too. That's yeah. not good. Yeah, those, if those are flush dormers, forget about it. Yeah. Well, I don't think. Well, if those are existing, that may be the way it is. Um, but I don't. Do we have, have an aerial view of the 
property we can just verify. Holly, is there existing or as built? Um, let me pull the original application. I think there was existing elevations in that from July 20th. So just bear with me. I told you. Yeah, I guess so. I think this kind of goes back to what Lucy said. This is they're just trying to get too much out of this building. They're, they're putting way too much on the second floor. Yeah, it's five bedrooms and two bathrooms in the house. Hmm. I mean, it's not the house. Yeah, it's not. Well, and I also recommend, you know, the, the letter that, that was provided from the owner kind of gives a little in depth of reasons why I could read it if you want me to. No. Okay. It, it, it looks like it's just a straight gable. Yeah, I was going to try to get on. I don't see a dormer there that's flush. Yeah. I've got that too. You really can't tell. Is that Google Earth or was that the uh, GIS? <laughs> Just went out. Ang Angus Earth. <laughs> or do you know? Let's see. Let me get a drone over there. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah, that's a good eye, Mickey. Um, I wasn't putting the two together, the west and the south, for that. Yeah, that's 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 definitely awkward. It would almost be better not to even have it. Isn't the Cornax house that's just right near it very similar in date and design? Which we're on, on North Liberty. It's on, it, yeah. I don't remember. I think they might be on the side of Franklin. And I feel like they have some additions out the back. And that might be something more to look at. I don't, I just don't, I don't completely remember it off the top of my head. So, um, Yeah, it actually does look like it's existing. Yeah, there's a there's an existing shed dormer there. Yeah, both sides. Yikes. Yeah, yikes. All right. So well here's an opportunity to correct it. I I would recommend stepping the massing down in the back and then if they want the extra bedroom to come off of the living room in the back so they don't interrupt the front mass. Um, so they add one up and they add one down. All right. We all set our piece. Yep. <clears throat> all right. And Holly, is that it? Yes, sir. That's it. All right. Uh, so what's um, Need a motion to approve the comments. Yeah, okay. Anybody make a motion to approve the comments? Motion. All right. Any seconds? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Um, uh, can I say something about the photograph that I sent you this morning, Holly? Yes. Okay. So um, I was down at uh, Wall Street, number 48. Um, there's the electric meter is right near the steps going up to the porch. And my concern is that, it, or my hope is that in the future, that we can keep an eye on um, all the meter stuff, like along with the AC stuff, so that it's not visible from the street. And, and I just wanted to notate that, um, it, gotta be careful that the HTC, you know, 
there's building codes and that usually is why a meter is in that particular location. I don't believe because, UCC has purview over that. Well, um, I want you to clean up. On my house, you know where my house is on the corner of Liberty and Liberty and Gardner? Okay. The, um, the people call it Headlight House. Mm -hmm. um, that they tried putting the meter on the side of the house that would be visible from the street. They, they're in the habit of doing that, but it doesn't have to be done that way. And so therefore, when you look at my house, you don't see any wires, meters, uh, vent pipes, nothing. It, it's, you know, it's like the same school as the people who want to put the thermostat in the middle of the wall. Thank you. That's a good point, Lucy. <clears throat> and they don't have to be always where they think they should be. Yeah, the classic case is when you drive down Orange Street and there's a huge bank of meters right there. It just drives me crazy. Or the Jared Coffin house split. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not go there, right? I am. I'm ready to get that. <laughs> Can we talk about dryer vents in the peak of um, dormers? Sure. We can talk about anything, but I got to go. So, <laughs> motion to adjourn, anybody? <laughs> oh. I guess you want to make that motion to adjourn? We did that. We need a roll call. Yep. Okay. Seconds? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Do we have to call that uh, individually? Yes. Oh, so I have to say, Angus seconds. Jason? Aye. Lucy? Aye. Chair is in favor and Mr. Roland made the motion so we can adjourn now. All right. Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.